In this video, we'll be looking at observing and classifying organisms. So when we are in the classroom, uh, we can actually conduct this experiment, but we will go through this in um, this video as well. So you can choose several prepared slides and perspex blocks containing organisms that we have in the science labs and we can view these samples using a light microscope. Now we have two types of light microscopes. We have compound and stereo microscopes, which I will talk about in a minute. From these, um, using these microscopes and organisms that you've selected, you can draw two scientific diagrams. So draw scientific diagrams of two organisms, follow the conventions listed below. So I will go through those in more detail in a minute. Create a dichotomous key for classifying six organisms that you select from the photographs below. So if you recall, we've talked about dichotomous keys before. Dichotomous keys are used for classifying, so the end point should be specific species. And dichotomous, remember, means cutting in two. So each step should have two things that you are separating it into. Now below, when you see the photos, you might choose uh, plants and animals. So your first split in your dichotomous key could be animals and plants. The second split may be legs and no legs, or it could be flower or no flower. And you will get to the point where you actually classify out your six organisms. And so again, they're the activities that you'll do. So you'll draw two scientific diagrams and you will create a dichotomous key. Now looking, as I said before, we have two types of microscopes. This one here is a compound microscope and it's used for looking at prepared slides. So you put your slide here on the stage, you have a light that shines through the slide and it's called a compound microscope because you've actually got two lenses that you're looking through. So this is the eyepiece and it has a magnification of 10. And then down here you have your objective lenses. Now this one has three objective lenses. We have some microscopes that have four objective lenses. Now you don't, we don't really need more than three. What that means is this. So if the eyepiece is magnified um, at 10, down here you have these three objective lenses. The smallest one is four, and then you have a 10 and a 40. And if you're looking at a slide while the four is down here, it means whatever you are looking at is 40 times magnified because you've got 10 multiplied by four is 40. Now, if you had spun this around and you've got the one, uh, the 10 here, you would be looking at 10 multiplied by 10. So you'd be looking at a 100 magnification. The other type of microscope we have, which is for looking at bigger samples, such as the perspex blocks that we have, which are much thicker than prepared slides, is a stereo microscope. So you can see here, there's a much bigger space for placing your samples. There is still a light source down the bottom, so that's why they're both light microscopes. And again, your eyepieces are magnified by 10, but most stereo microscopes will only have um, the lenses down here be, say, multiplied by two, multiplied by four, um, I think you can possibly get a multiplied by eight, but that's really all you will look at. So probably a two and a four, meaning 20, multi, uh, 20 magnification or 40 magnification. So to just look a little bit more specifically at the uh, compound microscope, again, you will have the multiplication 10, your objective lenses. And when we are trying to focus, we always start with our microscope on the objective lens of four because it's much further from the stage. We're not going to accidentally break our glass slide because when you get up to the 40 uh, objective lens, your slide and your lens will be very close together and you don't want them to touch and break. So you always start on the lower magnification and then you will uh, focus and then spin your objective lenses and go up in magnification. Now there's two types of focus that we can do. There's coarse focus and fine focus. So these two knobs move separately. This one here will visibly move the stage up and down. Usually you use your coarse focus until you, you see sort of the organism that you're looking for and then you can use the fine focus to make it really come into that really high quality focus uh, that you want to sort of take a photo of or draw or look at in detail. Now as I mentioned earlier there are conventions for when you draw your scientific diagram. 
we always have a border around our diagrams. They are at least half a page in size. So as I said earlier, you're expected to draw two scientific diagrams. So on one A4 piece of paper, you should have it split into two bordered sections and each section should have a title. So you clearly label your organism. You include the magnification so the person knows, the person viewing your diagram knows how magnified it was. Uh, you always use lead pencil. There's no sketchy lines or shading. It's a very simple drawing. Now, when you are labeling parts, it is straight lines. We don't draw arrows. There's no arrows because they can just add to the diagram and make it a bit more confusing. So just straight lines. And we do all of our labeling down one side. So here's an example. Obviously, it's not in lead pencil because I drew it on the computer. But you can see here, I was looking at some onion cells under a slide. I've got my border, a title. I've got my magnification really clear there's no coloring in no sketching and i just have straight lines to what i am labeling and they're both labels are down one side now as i said earlier uh, i've got some photos here obviously in the lab you can look at these things under the microscope but you can also use these photos so the top four are prepared slide photos so i've included the magnification and then the pictures below are of the perspex blocks that are holding organisms that we've got. And when you're in the classroom, you can look at those under the stereo microscope. So the first diagram we've got here, this is a cat flea, and it was at 40 magnification, 40 magnification. We have amoebas, um, I love this little one here. So these are at 100 magnification. This is some fungi at 400. So you can see the difference here. To, to get this photo of the flea, I only needed to use 40 magnification for the amoebas. These are under 100. And for the fungi, this is 400 times magnified. This one here is a hydra and this is a bud. So this is another hydra that's forming and will detach and will grow into another hydra. So this is at 40 magnification. And then as you can see here, we've got the perspex blocks. So you've got some algae, you've got some different sea creatures here, several lots of plants. And these are the ones that you can use for your dichotomous key. You could also do these for your science diagram. Some starfish, an urchin, some fish, little ray, is a Venus flytrap, little turtle, some developing chicken, and different plants here. So there's several, several different um, organisms that you can choose from to do your dichotomous key and for your diagrams as well.